Tonight, Trami devastation. Tropical storm Trami unleashes severe floods and landslides in northeastern Philippines, claiming more than 20 lives. E. coli fears. CDC investigates deadly bacteria outbreak tied to McDonald's as cases across the states are expected to grow. Middle Eastern conflict. Israel bombs historic Lebanese city as Blinken hints at new ideas for Gaza ceasefire. And robotic debut. Combining industrial arms with classical tunes, a robot cellist performs with symphony orchestra for the first time. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Other Than a World News Tonight. A very good evening and thank you for tuning into World News Tonight. I'm Nadi Balasuria here to bring you the latest global headlines. We have several important stories to cover, starting with the latest updates in Philippines. Tropical storm Trami has killed at least 26 people and forced more than 150,000 to flee their homes as it made landfall on the Philippines' northeastern coast. The government shut down schools and offices except those urgently needed for disaster response for the second day on the entire main island of Luzon to protect millions of people after tropical storm Trami slammed into the country's northeastern province of Isabela after midnight. The storm known as Christine in the Philippines was blowing over Aguinaldo town in the mountain province of Ifugao after dawn with sustained winds up to 95 km per hour and gusts up to 160 km per hour. According to state forecasters, it was blowing westward and was on forecast to enter the South China Sea later on. Police and provincial officials said at least 24 people died, mostly due to drowning in the hard-hit Bicol region and nearby Kuzen province, but the toll was expected to rise as towns and villages isolated by flooding and roads blocked by landslides and toppled trees managed to send out reports. About 20 storms and typhoons battered the Philippines each year. In 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, one of the strongest recorded tropical cyclones in the world, left more than 7,000 people dead or missing and flattened entire villages. Over in Malaysia, 22 members of the Global Equan Services and Business Holdings, including its Chief Executive Officer Nasruddin Ali, were formally charged in court for organized crime. While the exact nature of the alleged crimes remains unclear, authorities have ramped up efforts to clamp down on the Islamic conglomerate's entities amid investigations that revealed signs of sexual abuse in charity homes run by the accused. In September, Malaysian authorities arrested Naziruddin and other senior managers of GISB amid a widening police dragnet in the case. GISB, which police say is linked to a banned religious sect, has denied allegations of widespread abuse and other misconduct through Naziruddin acknowledged that one or two cases of sodomy had occurred. The suspects face up to 20 years in jail, each if found guilty. Police rescued more than 500 children from welfare homes linked to GISB last month. Some were believed to have been sodomized by their guardians, denied medical treatment and physically abused. The case sparked outrage and calls for better child protection and monitoring of child care centers. GISB, which aims to promote an Islamic way of life, owns mini markets, bakeries, restaurants, pharmacies, properties and other business abroad. It employs some 5,000 people. South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol held a summit with Polish President Andrzej Duda to discuss practical cooperation between the two countries, particularly in the defense sector. Their meeting takes place in a special context as North Korea has sent troops to Russia as it wages war in Ukraine. Polish and South Korean top security officials already met on Wednesday and agreed to expand their nation's defense cooperation in response. South Korea recently signed a deal to purchase so-called suicide drones from Poland to counter North Korea's rising threats. 
With Japan's general election just a couple of days away, the dissatisfaction with democracy among the public is growing and the risk of Japan ending up with a minority coalition government after the upcoming election is raising concerns. Now to get an extensive report on the story, we have Adhidharna World News Special Correspondent Rasita Chandradasa from Tokyo, Japan. Rasita, how is the general atmosphere concerning the elections over in Japan? Hello. We are into the last few days of the election campaign. Uh, all the campaign must end by midnight uh, Saturday, which is 26th, before the election on 27th. So the recent polls came uh, throughout the spectrum uh, do not look very good for the ruling LDP. Uh, pretty much every opinion poll uh, put them like less than the majority they need to win the parliament, which is of of course, 233 seats because Japanese diet has 465 seats overall. Even some of the worst case scenario put them uh, less than 200 seats. And interestingly, some even put them less than the main opposition, CDP. Uh, in, when the CDP is running only 220 uh, constituencies out of 286 uh, seats available. Uh, due to the hybrid system in Japan where we uh, first pass the post system elect 289 and then uh, the representation depends on the number of votes the party would get elect a further 176. Uh, so in the final few days of the campaign so far the biggest issue is the, uh, uh, the unreported uh, uh, campaign funds, the political funds the LDP has to face. It was a huge scandal which led to actually three charges, three people, were, three politicians were arrested, but that list includes 88 politicians, including the upper house. So if you take the lower house, which is, uh, which is the election is due this Sunday, there are about 45 such politicians are standing with and without the official nomination of the LDP. And some of the candidates, like the candidate who represents Michael Stresi, which is the Tokyo number no. seven, Marukawa san, Marukawa Tamao san, she's the former uh, Olympic minister, is actually lagging behind the main CDP uh, candidate. And Marukawa san is one of the most notorious uh, uh, unreported uh, fundraiser because she did not disclose uh, around 8 million Japanese yen. Not only she did not disclose that, she actually deposited that into her personal account, which is actually a, a financial crime in Japan. So it's not just Marukawa-san. Uh, the reports say another 20 to 30 odd uh, people who are involved in this uh, unreported political funds campaign are struggling to win their seats. Uh, the election is on Sunday. Although the ruling LDP is struggling and many expect them to lose the majority, uh, but these Japanese elections are hardly predictable and you never know until the every single vote is count and the results is out. Over to you. Thank you. That was Adhaderna World News Special Correspondent Rasita Chandradasa from Tokyo, Japan. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House now, Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris has denounced Donald Trump as a fascist who wants unchecked power and a military personally loyal to him. After allegations emerged about the former president's repeatedly voiced admiration for Adolf Hitler. Kamala Harris on Wednesday said recent comments by one of Donald Trump's former chiefs of staff showed her Republican rival was too dangerous to once again serve as president. The vice president and Democratic presidential candidate was quoting remarks by John Kelly, a former U.S. Marine general who served as Trump's chief of staff from 2017 until 2019. In an interview with The New York Times published on Tuesday, he told the newspaper that Trump meets the definition of a fascist and, quote, prefers the dictator approach to government. He said the former president would seek to rule like an authoritarian in a second term in office and quoted Trump as having told him German Nazi dictator Adolf Hitler did some good things. A separate article in Atlantic magazine quoted Kelly recalling that as president, Trump had said he wanted subordinates that were like Adolf Hitler's generals. Trump's team denied the accounts. 
The latest Reuters Ipsos poll showed Harris with a marginal 46 percent to 43 percent lead nationally over the former president ahead of the November 5th contest. Democratic vice presidential candidate and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz cast his ballot early and spoke to reporters on Wednesday. Walls is among more than 23 million voters who have already cast ballots, either through in-person early voting or by mail, according to tracking data from the Election Lab at the University of Florida. Also in the U.S., the deadly E. coli outbreak linked with McDonald's quarter pounders is expected to grow. New cases are being reported on a rolling basis as scientists make genetic linkages between the outbreak strain and the bacteria that is causing human infections. As health officials race to find the source of the deadly E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's quarter pounders, they say they expect the number of people affected to grow. So far, they've tracked 49 cases of E. coli across 10 states. At least one person has died, and 10 others had to be hospitalized. The FDA says slivered onions served on quarter pounders are a likely source of contamination. McDonald's pulling the entire sandwich off the menu in the affected states, about one-fifth of all restaurants. CEO Joe Erlinger trying to reassure customers. The outbreak could be a setback for the world's largest hamburger chain that's been trying to win back customers with $5 value meals after they balked at years of rising prices. Updating you on the latest developments in the Israel war now, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken pushed for a halt to fighting in Gaza and a diplomatic solution to conflict in Lebanon. But Israeli strikes on an historic Lebanese port city proved there was no respite yet. Israeli airstrikes pound tire a historic Lebanese port city. Israel began to bomb roughly three hours after issuing an order online for residents to flee central areas of the UNESCO-listed city. Tens of thousands of people have fled Tyre in recent weeks. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken was in the Middle East on Wednesday to push for a halt in fighting between Israel and militant groups Hamas and Hezbollah. But there was no respite for Tyre, usually a bustling hub for Lebanon's south with fishermen, tourists and even UN peacekeepers on a break from deployments near the border, spending time there by the sea. And no let-up either for besieged northern Gaza, which Palestinians were fleeing en masse on Wednesday. Health authorities reported at least 20 people killed in fresh Israeli strikes. Khaloud Abu Nader was among the many displaced with nowhere to go yet again. It has been 18 days. They have implemented a siege on the north. It was like they put us in a prison. We could not leave. In Lebanon, Israel's military said it had killed three Hezbollah commanders and some 70 fighters in the south in the past 48 hours, a day after confirming it had killed Hashim Safiuddin, the militant group's heir apparent leader. Since October 7th, a year ago, Blinken, in Tel Aviv before departing for Riyadh, said it was time for Israel to capitalize on its military victories. It's the last major U.S. peace push before the November 5th presidential election, which could upend U.S. policy in the region. This was Blinken's first Middle East trip since Israel killed Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar, a death Washington hoped could provide an impetus for peace. But Gaza residents say that since Sinwar's death, Israel has only intensified its assault on northern areas. Meanwhile, four people were killed and 14 others wounded in what the government called a terrorist attack at the Turkish Aerospace Industries headquarters. Witnesses said they had heard gunfire and an explosion at the site near Ankara. CCTV video, confirmed by Reuters, showed armed attackers approaching the Turkish State Aviation Company building. The cause of the blast remains unclear. A state-run news agency said prosecutors have launched an investigation. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, alongside Russia's Vladimir Putin at a BRICS conference in the Russian city of Kazan, condemned the attack and accepted Putin's condolences. NATO, the United States and the European Union also condemned the attack. Turkish Aerospace Industries is the country's largest aerospace manufacturer, owned by the Turkish Armed Forces Foundation and government, and employs more than 10,000 people. 
Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Moving over to New Zealand, emotional farewells are a common sight at airports, but travellers leaving the New Zealand city of Dunedin will have to be quick. The city's airport has imposed a three-minute limit on farewell hugs, sparking a worldwide debate. A 30-second hug boosts your immune system, but a three-minute hug can land you in trouble. That is at least the case at the Dunedin Airport in New Zealand after they put in place a new hug cap in an attempt to limit traffic jams. Although the move created quite a stir on social media, it was presented as a quirky alternative to fines or drop-off fees. Dunedin Airport staff hopes to continue to attract tourists to the sunny southern island without, hopefully, falling into cuddle criminality. Over in Greece, warmer temperatures are threatening butterflies in, driving them to cooler areas where there is less food. In a zoo outside Greece's capital Athens, thriving butterflies feed on orange slices. That's because this environment is free from the hazards of climate change, currently threatening populations in Greece and across the world. Antonis Ballas works at the Attica Zoological Park. Greece is home to some 237 species of butterflies, but warmer temperatures are making their lives harder. Food is becoming scarcer and flowering periods are getting shorter. Experts also suspect the butterflies may be getting smaller. Agronomist Konstantinos Anagnostelis is part of a research project called Meiosis by the Greek University of Ioannina. Their goal is to model how the body size of butterflies has decreased in response to climate change. Anagnostelis also says the heat is driving butterflies to cooler areas where there is less food. And that worsening wildfires are further limiting their access to it because of the loss of grasslands. The problem is echoed globally, including Mexico and Britain, where numbers of some species have declined sharply. And finally tonight, a robot has made its glittering debut with an orchestra in Sweden in a piece devised by Swedish composer Jacob Murad. Among the members of this orchestra in Sweden is a robot playing the cello. It's the first time in music history a robot has performed such a feat, according to composer Jacob Mulrad. Combining industrial robotic arms with 3D printed parts, the robot cello was designed and developed by researcher and composer Frederick Gran. Mulrad says it does not employ artificial intelligence, but was programmed by Gran using Mulrad's musical score specially written for the robot. The robot played at Malmo Live Concert Hall alongside the Malmo Symphony Orchestra. As a composer, Mulrad is known for blending classical music with modern influences. He said writing music for a robot helped him explore his creativity. Mulrod said incorporating AI is something being considered for future projects. Despite the possibilities, he said he doesn't see a world where human musicians are replaced by bots. And that concludes today's bulletin. Join us again tomorrow for the latest updates from around the world. Stay tuned as Vinut Varnasurya is up next with the nightly business report. Thank you for watching and have a great night.